if you test for allergies, you can really get a lot of information of the biomarkers on your kid mm -hmm. because you'll know, uh, you know, if, if he's allergic to corn, like Jonathan was, that's why he would have corn chips if we ever went to a restaurant. And I mean, in 20 minutes, he was climbing the walls, running around and angry. Well, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's ethanol. Corn is ethanol. So he's, he was like an angry drunk at, you know, two <laughs> off of a corn chip. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Mother's Guide Through Autism podcast. I'm Bridget Shipman, and I'm your host. Today, I'm speaking with Maureen Bryce. Maureen is an author, autism expert, advocate, certified health coach, biofeedback practitioner, inspirational speaker, blogger, and a single parent of three with her youngest son living with special extra needs and autism. Maureen has written a book, My Autism Hat Rack, The Life Flip. You can get this book on Amazon and you can also listen to it on Audible. And you will really get some really great insight from Maureen and her journey she has some great tools to share with you and great advice and stories to share with you about her autism journey and about her life in general and how she became a health a health and wellness coach. She's done some remarkable things. It has been my great joy to be introduced to Maureen and I really feel like you're going to enjoy this interview. And get ready because she has some great inspiring stories that she's going to be sharing with us today. I really hope you enjoy it. I'm so excited today. I have Maureen here and Maureen and I were visiting before I hit the record button and I just love it when I get to visit with um, these humans that are exceptional, that are really doing a lot of great things for all of us. Uh, so anybody listening to this episode, you're going to love Maureen and the work that she's doing and contributing to the autism community. So welcome, Maureen. Thank you, Bridget. That was so sweet. Thank you so much. <laughs> I meant every word of it. Well, this is going to be fun. It is. Everybody's ready for a good podcast because we're going to have some fun. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a very good interview. And I have a feeling that if you're driving um, and just, or if you're just listening to this, you know, you'll want to listen to it again. There's going to be a lot of great information for you uh, as a parent. So you might want to listen if you're at home and you can jot down some notes. Great. The great thing about this is you can listen to it as many times as you want to. And, um, you know, if there's anything that you missed, please just ask us any questions and you guys know how to how to get a hold of me which will remind you but also you'll be able to get in touch with Maureen as well so Maureen I'm going to just start out with your journey um, your personal journey with autism and tell us about your youngest son and his autism diagnosis a bit of background okay well my youngest son is Jonathan and he was diagnosed officially with autism uh, at like 16 months, but this was back in 2002. So it was one of those, um, I was, I've listened to a lot of your podcasts, by the way, Bridget, and it's so apparent, even your own story, how similar all of our stories are, especially the veterans, you know, who were thrown into this autism club, what, 20, you know, plus 20 plus years ago, right? So um, the doctor uh, was just doing all the kids. We did, I did them all at one time going through it all. And the nurse came in and she just said, you know, so how many words does, you know, Gregory have? And Gregory of course was six. So I was like, you know, he's reciting Captain Underpants and he has a sheet around his head and he's running around the place. He's, he's, he's great, <laughs> you know? And Danielle, my daughter, awesome. You know, and she's 18 months older than Jonathan. So 
<clears throat> anyway, having a third, you think you would think that you catch up to this stuff like, oh, he's not really coming to his name and he's not like when she said to me 200, like how many words does he have in his vocabulary for Jonathan? She said 200. That was it. It was like this lightning bolt hit me. And I thought, uh, no, I said, you can take a couple zeros off that. I, I was just like, holy crap. He's supposed to know 200 words. And, and I'm like, oh, wow. I knew it. You know, people were like third child never talks as much. His siblings talk for him. All these things I kept kind of asking people. And it was always brushed off. Even the doctors through the, the checks, you know. So to have this happen, I was like, oh, my God. I still was in shock. You Just even when you hear it. So the doctor comes in and checks the kids. And he's like, okay, any questions, mom? And I'm. I'm, and I immediately was like, Maureen, shut your mouth. Don't ask him. Don't ask him if you think something's wrong with Jonathan. Don't ask him about what it might be. Just don't. And autism back then truly wasn't well known. I mean, it was still like, I think one in 10,000. Yeah. So, um, or maybe even one in 25,000. It was, it was still pretty, uh, but it was getting popular. Mm -hmm. And so um, <laughs> he goes, well, yeah. I said, yeah, what's wrong with Jonathan? Something's wrong with him, I think. And, she, and he said, well, he shows signs of autism. And then he reached in his little lab coat and, you know, Dr. Blue Eyes, I call them, because he's all, well, he's really nice and everything. And he hands me a card he had in his pocket with a developmental pediatrician, his number on there. And I thought that, that, you know, I thought back, of course, I was still kind of in shock. And then I was like, he freaking knew he had in his pocket that chicken shit. I was like, what in the world? You're passing me off. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. he did. And he passed me right off to a developmental pediatrician. And that was a wait list for six months. And then she actually called me and told me she she was closing her doors. And right. And there weren't any developmental pediatricians in the area. And we were in Dallas, you know. So yeah, yeah. It was, it was still another level of like every time I sat there um, trying to target things for Jonathan to heal, right? Because um, I went to a biomedical aspect once I got past the behavior stuff, because Jonathan was what people typically call a nonverbal, severe autistic young man or young boy. He's a young man now, he's 23. So I always try and give him credit, right? Whatever credit's <laughs> due, obviously. And so he was, um, you know, he did self-inflict, harmed himself, and he did the spinning, and he did all sorts of um, severe characteristics that people talk about. So we, I like to think, okay, he was born normal, perfect, is what the pediatrician said at the time. He did get sick when we got that, um, a DTAP whooping cough shot, um, and he got whooping cough. So then he got antibiotics and stuff and he just never got better. It's kind of like he got a bum rap. You know, he, he could never get his old body to be better because he was only three months old when he got the whooping cough. Oh my. Right. So, and then he, he wouldn't drink, um, you know, breast milk. So I had to do formula. He threw that up. So we went to soy formula and then, you know, going down the road, I found out there was 86% glycinate or glyphosate. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. in the soy formula for the baby formula. Oh, so, wow. and then, so it's just kind of like you, you, you don't know this stuff. I mean, even the moms out there right now, you don't, you really won't know what to do that's right or wrong until there's just a moment when you know it's right. Right. Does that make sense at all? It, do, it does. Yeah. I, I, I think we, we do our best, Right. you know, and the majority of the time, I, I think we all know our, our kids best, but then we doubt ourselves and then we might try this or we might try that. And you go back. I, I, I know I've done that. And I've just said, you know, I wish I would have listened to the little voice inside of me. Um, I, but, yes. And sometimes yeah. I did and sometimes I didn't. But the bottom line is you're any mother listening to this, you're doing your best and that's all that matters. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Cause you do, you rely on experts, you know, and, you do. Um, you do. and, but everybody's unique. So yes. a lot of things that worked for some kids didn't work for Jonathan. Exactly. And, um, 
yeah, so we did the whole, we, you know, he went ahead and got into ECI, which was early childhood intervention where he had some OT and speech, but of course they wouldn't give him a diagnosis, which was funny. Um, it was like, oh gosh, I, it's so funny. A lot of the things I've done, I've, I've like all control deleted out of my brain. So I don't have to worry about it anymore, but it was like attention, attention deficit syndrome or, um, anyway, he, they wouldn't give him an autism label, which I didn't think anything about because I was getting the services. So right. the reason I do go back and I think it's important for parents to get a, a label, which I can't stand a label, but with the world we live in to get medical care and education services, you need, you need a label, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's good to get that. And then just start working with stuff. Then I always say, okay, get that label and then ignore it for the rest of their lives. Right. <laughs> because right. what you're going to do is look at the child and not the label. You're going to see the child and not the challenge. And, and so that's what I started doing. And he started getting better. And um, then he got, you know, he got hurt in school. He was in a, a special ed class. And in second grade, he got hurt really bad. Um, from his teacher and the teacher's aide. Yeah, they strangled him with a sheet and then put him in a padded cell and he started choking. And I, so, yeah. I got it, it. like, what? Like, if I can't. I know, when you told me you were in education, I was like, I love you so much because, uh, you know, it's just, it just takes one bad apple. There's so many great educators out there. <gasps> I, 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 it makes me, just so upset that somebody, somebody could that teacher, not anybody could do that to a kid. I mean, are you kidding me? I am so sorry that that happened. Oh well, I appreciate that. I do. No, it just it makes me just so like my mother, my from one mother to another mother. My goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It was um. It was hard. It was so hard to um, even understand what was, because he didn't, he couldn't really communicate to tell us what had been going on. So we, of course, you know, got him home because he started choking and I had to do, I got up to the school in three minutes and I got him in the nurse's office and I did the Heimlich and I actually saved his life. The ter nobody would help him. It was crazy because they were, they kept saying it was behaviors and I come oh. walking in and he's purple choking. And I go, Jonathan, oh my God, are you choking? And he stopped, he looked at me, he goes, yes. And he went and he slammed his body against the sink in the nurse's room to try and get what I found yeah. out was an apple. So oh we came God. to find out that they were doing a snack. The teacher got mad at him. He was eating his snack. She took his food away and threw him in the padded cell, brought him back out, wrapped him in the towel for sensory, used it as a sensory method, put him back in the... Thing. And so they had actually squeezed him to where his esophagus was swollen and he was choking on the apple. And it took an aide looking through the little window. Thank God she looked through the window. Her name was April. And she's an angel to me because she looked through that window and she saw he was, he, something was wrong and she got him out. Otherwise he would have died in the padded cell. So it's, he didn't go back to school. <laughs> I was going to say, I wanted to go. So my I'm assuming that my <laughs> career started then. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, pretty sure my son would not have gone back to that school. No, as well. but it was hard because, you know, they circled their wagons and I was a very, I mean, I was there every day dropping off his lunch. You know, I take him to school and then I bring him a special lunch because of his dietary restrictions. Right. So um, anyway, yeah, because I jumped right to second grade, but Basically what it was is uh, they circled their wagons. We had to sue the school and then um, we came to an, a settlement. But mm -hmm. in that deposition time frame, we did find out how many times he got neglected and, um, you know, abused. It was pretty bad. So I'm, so, a, I'm assuming he wasn't the only student that that was, was abused and under I, the yeah. I tried to, con yeah, I did. I contacted the parents to let them know what had happened to Jonathan. Yes. But, because I would have wanted that as a parent. Oh, yes. And oh, of course, yeah. I, what, what I found was, uh, you know, you're going to have the parents and I, 
and it's just truth. I'll just, because I'm a truth bomb. It's okay. It's like yeah. what it is, but mm-hmm. they're going to have parents who use it as daycare. Right. And not be as involved. And um, then you're going to have parents who are going to be, you know, helicopter parents, which that was me, <laughs> you know, me too. me too. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's just, I, yeah, I told them and then we, we removed ourselves from that school. It was, uh, it was the same year. It was so funny. Jonathan had just had his birthday. We did a deposition on his birthday. And then, um, so he had just turned 10 mm. and, um, my oldest son, John, uh, Gregory was a junior at the high school and Alan is, you know, back then it was, it's small. There's one high school, um, it's grown. Right. And it's a, it's a big high school now, yeah. but, um, but yeah, so Gregory was voted the voice of Alan high in this article. Cause he was like the lead broadcaster and stuff like that, doing his livelihood thing. Right. And then here I am fighting the school who, you know, basically tried to kill my kid. <laughs> so it was just the mental stress that it was just uh. unbelievable to deal with, but I, you have to, you, I mean, it's, it's yeah. So that was a, that was a, uh, yeah. 2010 was pretty hard. <laughs> 2010 it's, was really hard. It sounds very hard. And, and I think, you know, that's why I love doing this podcast because you know, we, we're all doing our best. Right. And wow. Uh, what a story. And just, you know, if nothing else, we all need to have more awareness of, of, you know, who, who's spending. Yeah. And it's like, like I said before, I mean, he had such great teachers and and when he did finally tell me he wanted to go back to school, it was in high school and he was a freshman and it was a wonderful experience. Yeah. He only yeah. met, he only did it for about six months because that's all he could handle. Right. Um, just with PTSD and all that other stuff. But um, what I think parents really should know is just listen to the signs from your child. Even like Jonathan kept saying no blue room. He, I mean, constantly no school, no blue room. Well, his bedroom was blue. So, I mean, I was thinking about painting his bedroom. <laughs> I was yeah, like, right. Okay, let me change that. You know, uh-huh. I never imagined he was talking about the blue padded room at school. So if you're, one of the things is honestly, if your child starts to tell you no school, just, just listen and then get a little more active with the teacher and get on the page with the teacher. I was, but you've got to use your gut. Like I knew something was off with that teacher, but um, anyway, so use your gut and and be the advocate. That's when advocacy definitely needs to kick in for a parent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but which is one of the hats on the my autism hat rack of the book. So, um, yeah, boy, I'm we just went. I'm just we. I'm the one who went right to right to that, didn't I? I well, I, I'm really um, glad that you shared that um, because it is so important. The advocacy, the health care. Um, you you've done so much work. The parenting support groups that you've done. Um, just, just bringing, um, the awareness of, of, you know, taking that story brings awareness on so many levels. Right. And then, uh, how you do communicate and, and to pay attention to our kids, because it is, it's very difficult. Um, I've often said that Joseph and I speak two different languages and it's really tough when we're not fluent with each other. Um, and, and so that's another example of how, you know, how do you communicate with your child and what to pay attention to? And cause it's so overwhelming, right? It is, it is. And you're just absolutely, um, you're deciphering everything yes. <laughs> you, know, you are, you're just trying to like, so one of the things that this doctor back to when Jonathan was little, the developmental pediatrician, when she called to cancel the appointment, she said, um, she said three things and I love this. You'll love this too. She said, first breathe. Hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm taking that. I'm mm-hmm. taking that lady. Um, she said, second, you need to test for allergies. And then she said, um, because what they'll do, and that's what I tell everybody in my book and any client, it's like, if you test for allergies, you can really get a lot of information of the biomarkers on your kid. Mm-hmm. because 
you'll know, uh, you know, if, if he's allergic to corn, like Jonathan was, that's why he would have corn chips if we ever went to a restaurant. And I mean, in 20 minutes, he was climbing the walls, running around and angry. Well, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's ethanol. Corn is ethanol. So he's he was like an angry drunk at, you know, two <laughs> off of a corn chip. <laughs> now, who knew this, right? You know, uh, yeah, exactly. But it is. You have to be like a, a detective and you have to think all the different steps from A to Z and it gets exhausting. Yeah. But, um, but that's why, you know, you're amazing on what you do, being out here to make awareness for moms and tell them your journey with Joseph and Jacob and just say, hey, this is what my experience is. Yeah. So if anything can help you, and then that's, you know, that you knock down walls uh, 12 years. Is it 12? Let's see, Joseph's 23. Jo Joseph's 31. Okay. So eight years before. Um, yeah. Yeah. Me, yeah. girl. I, uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I right. I tried very hard. Of course, I, I was in um, Mountain Home, uh, still I am. So I don't know uh, if I ever. I, I. It's amazing that you and I are just now meeting because we we've been in in this Those community for yes, 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 yeah. yes. And yeah. so uh, so. First of all, thank you for being so vulnerable and about um, sharing that story because, you know, not everybody is willing to be as open. So I really appreciate that because being able to be so open is where we really get, um, that's where the gold is when we share our stories. And that's like some mom's listening and she's going, oh my gosh. I had no idea. I need, I need to look at corn. I need to look at out. I need to, you know, and, and it's going to give somebody out there an aha. Uh -huh. yeah. And if it helps one person, then you and I have done, done our deed um, for okay. today. I love that. I know it's like, okay, yeah. don't do soy baby formula. That's my other takeaway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Don't, don't just cause there's too much, uh, too many chemicals in it. It's just, yeah. and the minute I took Jonathan off soy, I got eye contact. So he was allergic to soy. Yeah. Mm. He was allergic to everything. He was like that boy in the bubble. I don't know. So many people are so young. They probably don't remember that movie. But... Yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah. John Travolta fans go watch it, but uh, you know, so that... good. Yeah, it was good. But okay. Lorenzo's oil boy in the bubble. I'm just sitting here going, okay, these movies were made a lot, long time before I had kids. They knew something was going on. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You know? So it's so important. And then it's so funny how we get get these messages, and they don't quite sink in, or I don't know. And then you think back, and you're like, oh, you know, it, of course. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't I wasn't ready to receive or whatever it was. I I know I did that a lot with Joseph. I mean there. There were, and I talk about that in Mother's Guide Through Autism, our, our book that Joseph and I did. And I say, you know, it, when I think back, of course he was on this. It was so obvious. But, you know, that that denial is, is a power. It's powerful and it's useful because it's just when we're not ready, um, our bodies aren't ready. And then you get yeah. the, you get it and then you have to be ready, but it's just like that denial thing is powerful. And I think so many moms that I talk to feel so guilty about that. And it's like Maya Angelou in a nutshell, know better, do better and let it go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cheers. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I really want um, to visit with you about your book. Tell us uh, this book is, is, well, I love the, the title by the way. So I, I want to know how you came up with that, but your book, my autism hat rack, the life flip and what autism hat rack is. Tell us all about your book. It is. Um, it started as a blog. Back in the blogging <laughs> days where WordPress was a nightmare and it still is. So I don't do WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a book instead. It was like, oh, I hate that stuff. So, <laughs> um, so I was getting um, into the the groundwork of, of everything. And I did find a, six other moms who um, I related to. And we did start a parent group here mm -hmm. in Allen, Frisco, Plano area. And um, from that, 
we started bringing education and doctors in to talk to parents and stuff like that. I, so I was learning so much more. And with that, you know, I really had to know, um, I don't know if this happened for you, but when you go in um, with a with the kid like Jonathan, okay, I, what, I didn't just drop him off at speech therapy. I mean, I was in at the table with the therapist mm -hmm. and same with OT. I'm, I'm in there in the, you know, the gym. I'm not doing the zip line. I would have broken it, but you know, everybody else is all these kids and stuff. And um, so you, while you're in there, you just, I needed to absorb it. I wanted to be able to do a lot of this at home. Mm -hmm. So um, with that, it was speech and then nutrition. And then of course the biomedical aspect. And I was, I remember I had this dream and I saw this hat rack that was formed and it was just a hat with the words, you know, OT and, and speech and, um, nutrition and biomedical and um, neurology and and I was like well I'm making my own hat rack of autism <laughs> that's it so that. my autism hat rack came about and the life flip was just kind of like my emotional aspect of how it how it does it flips your life upside down because you know when you hear that diagnosis you you go and you did such a great uh, podcast series on grief but you, you do, you are like, um, you know, Dr. Blue Eyes said to me, he's like, be prepared. He'll never, he'll never have no love from his siblings. And he points to my other two kids in that room when he was telling me that he has autism and he goes, and so you might have to, um, he'll never speak. He'll never communicate. So you have to prepare yourself and you might have to institutionalize them. And he's 16 months old. And I was like, that was my first anger out of the shock. And then I went numb, <laughs> you know? And so I always heard that one, I thought, oh, these doctors are just, they're just shits. If they really understood what they, the wrecking ball they throw in parents, because mm -hmm. they make them just grieve immediately. They're just yanking these dreams of, of, you know, a baseball player or a pianist or a pianist or whatever they say it and mm -hmm. or a computer genius or, you know, and, or just a kid, you know, yeah. at one point I was just like, my God, if we could just have the word English, you know, some English words coming out of you versus, you know, not worrying about saying a dictionary, but right. um, anyway, so the, the hat rack started to form and then the life flip has the flip on that. And it's where I really started to go in on myself and, and realize after almost 13 years of raising um, a child in this autism bubble um I was I was losing it like I needed to really find myself I needed to like put more care into me mm -hmm. and uh and what was really wild is the writing did that for me it really did it was very therapeutic it was awesome and I thought you know I've always you know I've always been a writer I've always done that blogging and stuff like that I was like okay I'm gonna do a book so um I did the book and oh, I did the book and so I did the book. Yeah. Oh, wow. I love the cover. Thank so you. If you're, so that's Jay. <laughs> and then those um, are my three blessings right there. Oh, they are. Oh, I love, I do. I really love that cover. So if you're, or you're listening, you, you, you know, check, check out the book. The cover is awesome. And you can get it on Amazon, I'm assuming. Yes. yes. And the Audible has a different cover because my oldest son, um, he's, he is into he, he's a filmmaker so wow. yeah so he's he's uh it's funny and my daughter is an animator so it, everybody's like you have artistic artistic and autistic and I was like oh, we don't put labels <laughs> here but yeah that's funny okay yeah so he got me in the studio to do the audible of the book. Wonderful. And it has a different cover. And it's actually my favorite because everybody who's listened to it and gotten back to me, they're like, this is what I send to everybody because it's in your voice. You, you, you They can feel you go through it. And it's like they everybody resonates a little more with it. So mm -hmm. if you like I audibles, love, get the audible. It's better. I, I'm going to do that today because um, I love walking and I that's what I do. I listen to um lectures and books um one of those nerdy people I, I love that so I will I will get it today well, and I look you. forward to it because oh, you cool. have well, thank you and I'm a, a nerd with you girl that's it <laughs> yeah yeah I 
I can walk forever when I'm listening to to a book. So I will definitely get that today. And I I know that you and I were talking um a bit about before we started this interview about your health crisis back in 2019. If you would tell us about that, and that story is just so powerful as well, and then it goes right into what you do now. So tell us about that. Okay, I'm ready to do it. You're my, you're my, you're my groundbreaker. <laughs> so, All right, let's do this. <laughs> so, well, um, I got a. Uh, uh, I was divorced in 2016 after 26 years of marriage. And, you know, we were one of the couples that, oh, you know, we survived and you hear all these divorce rates and stuff. And um, we didn't, but it really wasn't about autism. It's really about, you know, just life in general of two mm -hmm. people. But um, then you being single, I immediately became the 24 seven caretaker of Jonathan and my daughter, Danielle, was still in uh, here at home, and then she was graduating and off to college. So it took a toll on me, but it just chipped away slowly. And that's why um, I really think it's important for people to just stop and do some mama time, you know, or, or just figure that out. Well, you know, that's definitely something in my passion wheelhouse to, to make more of a prominent thing for moms out there. Mm -hmm. But knowing that I, I myself... I I'm sorry. I said, I agree 100%. So I hope mom's listening heard you say that. Oh, please. I mean, even if it's a massage once a week or something, because, uh, yes, because it, it starts to build up and break down. So when you're breaking down, it comes at you like you don't even like it came at me from nowhere. Mm -hmm. And I was, um, I was very sick and, uh, started in January and I had vertigo, which I'm a very healthy person. Uh, I mean, I'm a health coach, you know, and well, not at the time, but I was a very healthy person knowing how health affects the body with Jonathan and all my kids. So we ate well, we, we exercised, all this stuff. And um, I, I just had this vertigo. I was feeling fatigued. I was foggy brained and it was so, it came on so fast. I didn't really understand it. And I saw 17 specialists, nobody, everything. Oh, you're, it was so weird. <laughs> oh, nothing's wrong with you. All the tests are coming back normal. And I'm sitting there and I can't even sit on the table. And I really look back at this time and think, oh my gosh, did God in the universe make me repeat Jonathan's journey? You know, when you go back and you get all these tests for your kids and they come back at you and like, oh, everything's normal. And it's not, I mean, you just know it's mm -hmm. not normal. He, you know, stuff like that. I mean, that happened through us through all through those years. So I go back, I don't get any help. And so I'm trying to fix this myself, but I really, when you're sick, you, you really are your worst, uh, medical help. <laughs> you really are I you're not your best healer. I should say, cause you're too exhausted. And, um, and I was going, supposed to go out to dinner with my brother and my dad and my niece. I made it to dinner. I was there and I was like, I need to get home. I'm too dizzy. So, um, my brother, uh, brought me home. He went back to dinner and I went to bed and that was the last I remember until my dad was over my body. And he was like, honey, you, and I couldn't really talk. And so they thought I had a stroke. So they got me to the hospital and that's where I almost died. And um, I was in a coma, coma state. Like I couldn't lift my arms. I couldn't talk. I could mumble. Um, I couldn't even lift my eyelids. It, they were so heavy. It was the wildest thing. And the doctor came in and he said that I was, uh, I could hear them all. <laughs> you know, I could hear him talking to my brother and my dad. And, and he was saying I was really lucky because I wouldn't have been found alive the next day because I was, uh, my brain was swelling. It was, um, hypoencephalitis. And so mm -hmm. I had been drinking, I guess, too much water without the right electrolytes or nutrition coming in and out. And so, um, or just something was attacking my body, you know, and, um, they gave me some, uh, potassium and some sodium and it got me going again. But before that happened, <laughs> this is what, I, this is what we talked about before the interview. So before that happened, um, 
I couldn't move my arms and my, like I said, my eyelids and stuff. And I just surrendered because I was, I was scared shitless. I had been dealing with this for, this was March 2nd. So I definitely for like three months without answers. And, um, I, I didn't, I mean, I couldn't understand what was going on with my body. It was shutting down. It literally was shutting down kidneys, you know, everything was starting to just, and I was like, why? I don't get it. So I just surrendered uh, to God. And, um, and I'm a big believer in, you know, not necessarily religion, but just a spiritual, um, you know, a spiritual presence in God and the universe of just being there for your backup and um, in myself. I mean, if I'm just talking to myself either on the inner self, that's fine. But I was just like, okay, I give up. But if you know me, I'm not just going to give up. <laughs> so I negotiated. <laughs> so I said, I give up and I surrender and you can take me, which was hard for me to do because, oh God, I'm getting cut. It was hard for yeah. me to do because I'm the mother of three, single mom, and I'm Jonathan's only caretaker. I mean, his dad is definitely there, but he was in the right set of mind to do what I do. So um nice. anyway uh i just said but if you find someone to take care of jonathan like i can um then you can't take me yet and that's when i had this this breath come into my body and it wasn't through my mouth it was the strangest thing i've never felt anything that i know of uh, just that forceful and it pushed into my chest and made me take a breath and then it the force of it, I got to open my eyes and I'm, it was the first time I could open my eyes in what I thought was like an hour or two, but it was really four. I, my brother told me later on and I was like, oh my gosh, what, what's going on? And as I'm opening my eyes, I see, you know, my brother's like reaching across from me uh, over my head. I see the door slam open and it's the nurse and doctor racing in with a cart and, and I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> And what happened, my brother told me later, because I'm such a science data geeky person. So having the spiritual aspect literally tie up with the data. So the data was my heart rate was going down to 48. And my brother was reaching over to hit the alarm on the heart monitor machine that's by those beds. And I, at that exact moment, I was making my negotiation. So my brother heard me mumbling something so he was like, what? And at that moment, he said, my eyes opened and I took a huge breath in, like a huge breath. Mm -hmm. And he said he looked back up to hit the button because he thought I was, he thought I was taking a last breath, right? So he reaches to hit the button and that's when he sees my heart rates at 178. So we went from 48 to 178 with that breath. And I was like, oh my God, we've got uh -huh. like... Well, oh my God, thank you. We've got the data and the, and the negotiation worked. And <laughs> what, what a story. And, yes. and um, I, I get goosebumps uh, again, just because I, I can just feel the, uh, first of all, I can feel your mother's heart thinking about leaving your yeah. children, right? That's yeah. I still have a hard time talking about that. I, <laughs> I thought, you know, it's like, ah. Because for another day, but I also was very close to death. Um, and Were so, you really, yeah, yeah, but <gasps> yeah, so we'll, I'll, I'll share that a, a, another time. Oh but my God, the, we're going to have to have like the survivors. Class. I know, I know. <laughs> but the, the whole thing about it is, is, is from one mother's heart to another. And you're just like, you know, um, so many moms that I talked to is just like, well, I'm so fearful of when I'm not here, right, for my child. It, it's just the biggest, scariest thing. And so um, you being actually in that situation and bargaining with, with God and the universe and that breath comes through you saying, okay, you know what? Not yet. And so here you are. And not only are you caring for your children and Jonathan, but now you're helping all of us, which is such, such a beautiful, beautiful thing. So my goodness, you take that experience and now you're a health coach. 
you, right because and... i found out the house we were renting was had mold and um uh the floors actually we had formaldehyde in our systems jay and i did it was <sighs> off the charts and i found it was coming from the wood veneer floors so right so um Anyway, that is when I did apply a lot of my knowledge of, of helping Jonathan through the years get, mm -hmm. you know, heal and get better mm -hmm. biomedically. So I started applying that and I did make that. I said, okay, if I get better, I'll, I'm going to go more the health route and really get the wellness out there. And um, so you're right. That's what I, I went and got certified as a health coach and stuff, but I did get better. We moved out, obviously, <laughs> but yes. there was a lot of rebuilding. It took me a year and a half. Um, you know, I, I'm knocking on wood. I, uh, you know, I'm three years good, right? So, yeah, is that right? Three years good, about two years good, three years good, just like strong. And um, yeah, it's, it, I took it all and applied it. And that that's what I love is... Um, you know how when we were sitting there trying to do everything for our sons and our kids with autism, right? And it would have been so great to have a playbook. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and there are playbooks out there. I mean, they, you can find them. And it's just, you know, maybe two thing, two plays work for your your team, right? Mm -hmm. And and you need uh -huh. to go to a different playbook and get, you know, three off that scrimmage page and bring it to your team. So it's still a find it, find it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so when I healed myself, I created Higby, which, um, is uh, five targeted categories that absolutely can help get you healthy, rebuild your immune system, reboot your body, no matter what age, no matter what gender, nothing like that. And it helped Jonathan and it helped me. And so I'm, I'm excited about, that's what I help my clients with on their custom mm -hmm. level and stuff, but I am going to be getting just a good playbook like out there for people to be able to download and um, I'll, I'll get it out there by the time this is posted, hopefully. Oh, it's wonderful. Website. Yeah. Cause it's easy. I mean, it really easy. Once you have those targeted ideas, mm -hmm. and Higby is hormones, inflammation, gut, brain, and environment. Okay. And so targeting those things, even, you know, getting two to three things in that category that will make you feel better then you tip it over, you know, it's like that tipping point goes into the wellness part. So, um, I'm so excited because it's working for my clients. It's worked for me. Oh my know? goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what a gift. Um, I mean, it's awful that you had to go through that, um, <laughs> <laughs> to get, yeah, to get I, us to this point. Right. Right. Well, what I've decided <laughs> to be, you know, the universe is like, okay, I'm not up at bad anymore. <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've, my team's gotten enough hits. I'm ready to go ahead and chew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you, but what I love about you is that you turn like these unbelievable stories that are, are just very hard and struggles and so much resilience that you have. And then you turn it into helping other people. You, you know, that's what's so cool about it is, is okay. you're sharing it with all of us, you know, um, because it, it would be easy to just, you know, Hey, all right, I'm feeling better and, and go on, but you're turning in, in this, you know, these hard times, these struggles into really something beautiful that you're helping other people with. And so I really, really do admire that. Well, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I, I don't see any other way to do it. You know, I just that's I, because you're you. That's right. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. <laughs> we don't we don't need two of me. That's for certain. <laughs> well, um, I I think that. Um, but sisters that's of the heart, we totally need. Yeah. yeah. Yes. To where everything's covered. <laughs> yeah, I I I get that, and um, I know that. Uh, moms or any really anybody we can apply all our our life lessons um what is your best advice for anyone who's listening what are what are the the top lesson or piece of advice that you would like to share with our listeners so if you're a listener and you're a mom of a child who's been diagnosed with autism 
first and foremost, I would just say, you're going to have to deal with it, right? You're just going to have to deal with all the, the first steps, you know, getting allergies tested, uh, looking at their diet, trying to get speech and therapy in there. Um, RDI, I love RDI, it's a great therapy. Things mm -hmm. like that, the the stuff you'll find. But what you won't find, and I, or you might find, but I, what I would like to say is there's a level to these children that I've always felt and known, but it was after my, my near-death experience that it became more pronounced that these children like they have a sensory of of another level that we're we're not in tune with um mothers are because we call it like mother's intuition or mm -hmm. follow your mama gut right mm -hmm. and that is the type that's to me is like the intro to it all to where listen to that absolutely first thing when it comes to your child because they're trying to tell you something whether it's in their energy whether it's in their words, if you're lucky enough to get that, that's awesome. Um, whether it's in their actions and behaviors, they're just trying to communicate. And there's a certain level, I feel like these beautiful souls, I call them rock stars, that these rock stars can, it's like telepathic. Our friend Luminara, you know, pegged it when I was telling her about it. And she was like, so they're telepathic. And I go, oh, okay, I guess. I don't know. I mean, to me, it's more of a a soul energy connection um, that yes, goes into a realm of uh, being telepathic, but it's more of a knowing. And that connection you have with your child is true, 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 true to your knowing. Mm -hmm. And and you're, you're all they have in this world right now. It really is. You are their best advocate. You're the best voice and it wears on you. So that's what we were talking about earlier is take some care uh, for yourself. But to listen to that, um, that mama gut, because it's your child in their own sensory way, telling you clear thoughts, clear words, just what they're thinking and, uh, and embrace it. I, there's such a movement going on that I really think we're, we're just now taking, you know, pulling back the veil of mm -hmm. a lot of these beautiful souls who are really starting to show us their capabilities in different ways, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, spelling to communicate uh, that new method, which is like the RPM, the rapid pointing method that we did years ago with Soma, um, or if it's in PEX or some iPad or, you know, anything, um, but they're so brilliant. They're just trapped. And um, yeah, I, that would be the best thing is just, you know, hone in and tune in on that mother. And don't second guess your, your intuition. Go with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because every time I listen to it, it is spot on. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mine too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I would we love to hear what, what the listeners, I would love to hear the listeners say, you know, like how many a story even of their yes. mother gut episode. Yeah. I, I, I would too. Um, I'm always encouraging uh, any questions or whatever. And um, we do have a private Facebook group for moms. So um, they I'm can, joining. am I oh, on it? I need to get on it. No, Come but, on. but you're going to be, and, and we can bring these questions up and just get a lovely conversation going with, with moms um, because uh, we're, we're really growing. We're almost, uh, I think 700 members now. And um, we just share. It's all about just sharing and loving and supporting. And, you know, that's, that's what that group's about. And so, oh, I love that. I love yeah. That. So please join. I, I will look for you and then you and I can just, we'll just have a lovely conversation in there. So mom's listening, get ready. Join Mother <laughs> Side Through Autism private Facebook group, because we're going to have some, some great uh, conversations in there. Uh, I also wanted to know, so this, this interview has just been great. I've so enjoyed it. Our listeners are going to want to know where, the, where they can find you. Where can they find you? They can find me. The best way is on my website. And that is uh, www, if they even use that anymore. I'm not sure. Uh, hopedreambelieve.com. So if you go to hopedreambelieve.com, 
you'll find me and you'll see where I do my wellness sessions for uh, health coaching. I do angel card reading for a lot of my spiritual aspect where um, I connect with a lot of these nonverbal um, rock stars and mm -hmm. I get to tell the parents what they're feeling. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful miracle for me. I get to do that. And then um, I do Healy sessions, which is a quantum physics, uh, really cool energy healing machine modality that I do there too. And then my books on there. So you yeah. can find me there. Well, um, so when they, when anyone who's listening, I, I, I just try to ask questions that I would want to know, um, do you do this, um, online or do you have to do it in person or how can they work with you? No, I can do it remote online. Okay. Yeah. All of it can be online. It's, uh, it seems to be easier and thank goodness the technology took a good it took a good thing that happened when the world shut down. <laughs> it did. It did. And I'm yeah. so grateful for it too, because I get yeah. to work with people from all over the world. And so, um, you know, I, I can, I just know I can, using my intuition, I just feel other moms going, gee, I wonder if I have to, if I can work with her, you know, all through Zoom or whatever. So yeah, we'll do it. And we'll, and the, like the angel cards and stuff, uh, readings that I do, um, we can record it. There's an option to record it. So you can have that to look back on because it's always fun, right? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you want to be in the moment when yes. you're getting a reading. And then I always like to go back and see. So. Oh, yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> you are just a lovely um, light. And I'm so glad that that we were introduced through our, our friend Luminara. And um, I can't wait to see what what we end up doing together because we're all about helping helping each other out so you're just you've been lovely and I know you're going to be back in a mother's guide through autism right yes I think we're booking it now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's so awesome well thank well, you thank, thank you, so you much. for being a guest and for all of you out there, if you enjoyed this interview, which I'm sure most of you did, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help Joseph and I spread knowledge, hope, and inspiration. I'll see you in the next episode.